Hello everyone and welcome to this 13th lecture of this uh, course on introduction to remote sensing and in this uh, particular discussion we are going to have a discussion on georeferencing technique. Uh, this is a very important uh, uh, processing uh, both in digital image processing and that is means in remote sensing as well as in GIS. This is a common thing which has to be done to all types of data sets which are not uh, so far belonging to uh, geographic domain and that is why the georeferencing is very much required. It is a, a serial uh, uh, processing or a step by step it has to be followed and uh, uh, it is not a complicated but it is very very important uh, technique uh, in remote sensing as well as in GIS. So, if I uh, look the definition what it says that the georeferencing basically transforms image data maps from one domain that is geometric domain to geographic domain. Geometric domain if you recall the coordinate geometry which was taught to us in somewhere in 9th 10th class introduced in 9th 10th class that we used to have a uh, in the in the corner uh, of two axes uh, in the origin we used to have 0 0. But if I go to the downward or on the left side in my coordinates then these becomes negative and then complications will start once I go for measurement of a length on an area or perimeter. If I am having half coordinates in positive half in negative and so on so forth. So, you, uh, this uh, coordinates the concept is same only this the coordinates have changed instead of having 0 0 in the origin of uh, 2 axes we are having geographic coordinates which are continuous all over the globe. So, uh, we transform basically maps satellite images especially because uh, those satellite images can be corrected to some extent using uh, orbital parameters, but those are not very good uh, uh, inputs for a very accurate georeferencing. For relatively coarser resolution satellite images like NOAA VHRR images, even this navigational uh, um, or uh, orbital parameters if I use for georeferencing may be for some applications may be appropriate. But as we go for higher and higher spatial resolution more accurate uh, georeferencing uh, is in demand. Then we are looking uh, for very highly accurate georeferencing uh, process or technique and therefore uh, we need to transform our satellite images whatever they are coming from different satellites or maps because on GIS platform we handle lot of maps also. So, these maps if I say scan a topo sheet a survey of India topographic map of say 50,000 scale. Now, it will have the image uh, will have at the top left corner will have uh, 1 1 basically the from first pixel and then uh, uh, everything whatever it is there and this will remain in geometric domain unless we go for georeferencing. So, that is why all these maps if they are scanned uh, they will be in geometric domain images also more or less are in geometric domain especially high resolution images I am talking and uh, we need to transform from one domain that is geometric domain to geographic domain and this uh, georeferencing technique will allow you to bring coordinates in our images or in our maps of geographic coordinates that is in terms of latitude longitude. So, that is the basically purpose of georeferencing. As I have mentioned that when an image a satellite image is acquired the resulting image has certain errors systematic and non systematic errors in very very soon we will be seeing which are systematic errors which are non systematic errors and uh, then ge these geometric errors uh, will create distortions in the images. These distortions in the images might come because of scan skewness, scan skewness comes because uh, your uh, polar orbiting satellites or remote sensing satellites are not exactly orbiting from north to south, they are having a near polar orbiting and therefore, uh, and the same time when scanning is, bun is done by the uh, sensor or a satellite based sensor earth is also moving. So, therefore, there you will have a skewness which we will see very soon what the basically skewness is. Maybe a panoramic distortions are because 
your satellite uh, having say relatively poor spatial resolution data might be covering a very large part of the earth. That means the swath width if it is large then the curvature of the earth will also play a very important role. And then your images might be uh, getting distortions because of panoramic distortions. Maybe attitude of platforms, these satellites are moving objects in space. So, sometimes there might be change in the velocity, they might tilt in one direction or another and therefore, they might bring these kind of errors in the data like velocity, altitude, pitch, roll or yaw. All kinds of errors are inbuilt in images, in satellite images. But using one georeferencing technique, many of such errors, especially uh, systematic errors can be removed quite easily. So, that is that is the beauty of uh, this technique is few uh, systematic errors which are easy to remove systematic errors cross track scanner in earlier uh, like in uh, Landsat programs we had these uh, uh, cross track uh, scanners. So, they used to have uh, distortions in the images especially on the edges of image. So, that was the reason now we are having more linear arrays system based along track uh, scanners and therefore, and uh, these errors have anyway have been minimized. Then mirror velocity because in these errors we used to have opto mechanical devices as discussed in earlier uh, lectures when we were discussing different sensors and platforms. So, they used to have a, a moving mirror and that move, uh, mirror used to have some variations in the velocity which might caused uh, some distortions in the images. So, in earlier versions of this Landsat uh, MSS images all these kind of errors were there. A skewness problem will also be there as I have mentioned that when satellite is orbiting not in near pole to pole, but near polar same time earth is also moving. And within that one say a scene uh, is a, a about say a 10 minutes are required to capture a scene of say 150 a kilometer by 150 kilometer area by a moderate resolution sensor, then in that 10 minutes there will be some movement of the earth below the orbit and therefore, this will cause a skewness that is why you see in the images. The non systematic errors which are uh, which uh, are uh, difficult to predict and uh, which might be there sudden change in the earth rotation. Of course, uh, this is a, a more or less a known thing, but altitude variation of the satellite, pitch variations of the satellite, spacecraft velocity suddenly it has changed, slowed down, it may create some problem. Roll that means the, uh, the your uh, platform has uh, rolled over uh, like this, uh, this kind of movement. So, that will create a rollover or a yaw means it has moved something like this in a space while moving or while scanning or acquiring the satellite image. So, therefore, these kind of errors might be inbuilt in the data. So, many of these errors through georeferencing can be removed quite easily. As you know that images are stored as raster data that means the two dimensional matrix which each pixel in the image has a row and column numbers and hence are in geometric coordinate system. So, top left we start counting top left the first pixel first row and so on so forth. And uh, in order to display and analyze these images in a digital image processing or on GIS platforms, uh, we need to have a georeferencing maps or data sets. That means, we need to have at least somewhere for referencing something for referencing and uh, that is necessary to establish an image to word transformation. So, we need to have a master image or master map and then if I uh, uh, use a word slave the map which is in geometric domain the image which is in geometric domain need to be transferred into geographic domain. So, that you need to have something uh, to uh, uh, which is already in georeferencing or this georeference or geographic domain. Uh, so, this uh, uh, this uh, image to word transformation is possible and then your image can be converted image coordinates which are row and columns can be converted to in real world coordinates that is that means the geographic coordinates and that also means uh, the latitude and longitude. So, a common method of uh, georeferencing also it is known as geometric corrections 
uh, image registration, image rectification. So, in different books, literature, you may find little different terms. Nowadays, the most popular term for this kind of processing is called georeferencing. A is to statistically find a polynomial of a given order. Depending on the distortions which you are expecting on an image, you would choose appropriate polynomial equation. And then this that will minimize the errors in a transformation from a original image coordinates to rectify image coordinates. We will see little later all these details and then once this transformation function is found that which pixel has to go where then the next thing is to uh, uh, we, we go for the least square fit for coefficient of a given polynomial equation using ground control point that are picked by the user. And once this is there, the transformation is there, then the last and third step is that uh, you go for georeferencing. Uh, I, let me give you through this uh, schematic that this is input image which is already in geographic domain that is it is georeference I consider as a master image. And uh, this is uh, sorry this is my reference map master image this is input image which is having skewness effects are visible here. So, this is raw image this is master image. Now, these are the ground control points what are the ground control points ground control points are those points which are common visible in both my image and say in a map. So, suppose if I say this is my survey of India topo seat and this is my satellite image. So, if I am seeing the crossing of two roads or maybe a bridge on a river, maybe a bridge on a rail, a rail track or a aqueduct or similar kind of structures which are fixed, which are not moving with time very quickly. So, these may become my uh, ground control points and we say common ground control points means if I am seeing a, a roads of two. Uh, two roads cross section here, then the uh, corresponding uh, road cross section should also be visible in my map. So, I will note down the coordinates from my master map or uh, reference image and then use and assign these uh, through my polynomial equations assign these uh, to uh, these uh, unknown location which I have already identified, but only coordinates are missing. So, this image will have geom uh, geometric coordinates will, will start from top left this image master map will have my coordinate geographic coordinates which might start from uh, bottom left. And once it is done through resampling then I will have which uh, this uh, this raw image will, uh, will fit over my master map one through after doing resampling and then finally, I get a product which is geometrically corrected that means it is now having geographic coordinates in it and it can be used uh, on a GIS platform, it can be pasted on Google earth and so on so forth. Now, which order polynomial order to choose, but before that let me reiterate three steps. First step is registration, registration of a uh, an image or a map which is slave with a master using ground control points. Once this is done, then I choose a, once it is registered as per the my polynomial uh, as per the requirements as per the distortion present in the image or expected distortions, I will choose accordingly the polynomial equations. And these polynomial equations with least square fit will give us the transformation function. Now, transformation function means that which pixel will move in which direction and how much. And once I know this much for each pixel of my slave image with reference to master image, then the third and last one is uh, georeference and resampling. And that means there are three techniques of resampling. And then the value of the pixel, what values should be assigned uh, to a empty master map, which is going to be my final georeferenced map or image and that can be decided by during the resampling step. So, three steps for the first the registration by using ground control points then using polynomial equations finding out the coefficient or transformation function and finally uh, going for resampling. So, now uh, which uh, polynomial equation the first order polynomial uh, is required 
uh, which also called as a conformal uh, uh, conformal polynomial uh, when I have to transform from just simply from geometric domain to geographic domain. So, suppose I am having a, a map which is not yet georeference, I just would like to simply transform without change in scale without any rotation or without any uh, you know removing curvature of the earth or anything. Just simple transformation from geometric domain to geographic domain then first order polynomial would be more than sufficient for this kind of transformation. But in case of satellite images this is not sufficient at all because it involves uh, uh, not, uh, not only just simple transformation from geometric to geographic domain, but might be change in scale, might be rotation as well. So, if that kind of uh, requirement is there, then the second order polynomial will be chosen that is also called a fine transformation. So, uh, instead of just transferring from one domain to another, second order polynomial equation will allow us to transform not only from ge uh, ge geometric domain to geographic domain, but also it will allow us to change the scale and it will allow us the rotation of the my map. So, that I get north completely upward. So, that for that purpose the second order polynomial will be chosen. If, if uh, I am having a relatively coarser resolution data and uh, this satellite image requires corrections not only uh, not only the transformation, not only change in scale, not only rotation, but same time and uh, this curvature effects has to be removed because satellite image is representing a curved surface of the earth if it is a coarser resolution image. For example, NOAA HR data which is covering a 2800 kilometer in one swath, one go and this uh, width of an image is covering a curved, curved part of the earth and that has to be unwrapped. Basically, it has to flatten and therefore, for such kind of images where we expect that they might be suffering from even few more distortions, not only scale change and rotation, then third order of polynomial is appropriate. Though in some softwares, in image processing or in GIS softwares, people have implemented up to 12th order polynomial order, but I do not think that uh, such kind of uh, uh, georeferencing is required because maximum what we uh, can see the distortions is all uh, because of curvature of earth or rotation of a platform, yaw and roll um, other things are there or this is skewness. All these can be corrected uh, at uh, third order polynomial. But if you if you go higher and hard higher in the polynomial equations uh, for determining the uh, transformation function, then the number of GPS uh, will require would be much higher. So, this is decided based on the ground control points and that is and based on this equation P is the polynomial equation. So, if I choose for first order of polynomial then number of GPs as minimum number of GPC, GCPs are required only 3, but if I choose 2 then second order polynomial then I require 6. If I choose the third order of polynomial then minimum number of ground control points are required 10 and so on. That does not mean that if I am going to, uh, for georeferencing I will only choose if I am using the first order I will only collect 3 ground control points. No, that is the minimum requirement. In practice we go by multiplying 2. So, if I am going for first order polynomial instead of 3 ground control points I will choose 6. If I am going for second order polynomial instead of 6 I will choose 12 because I, I want to achieve georeferencing within pixel and for that I need to choose ground control points very carefully and corresponding point in the my slave map 1 and then I, I, I I should choose more ground control points so that my image rectification becomes very accurate. This is how uh, once again I am trying to explain here and uh, that uh, one map here is the uh, my slave map, another one is my master map. Now I am uh, slowly slowly I identify these ground control points. One thing which you will notice here is that these ground control points are spread all over the image just five 
ground control points are demonstrated here. But uh, what basically means here that the if, if my image is this much, I should choose ground control points which are through which within uh, which are throughout the my image area. It is not that all ground control points will be concentrated only in one corner of an image, then it will give you a completely wrong uh, uh, wrong georeferencing. Let me give you an analogy, you say basically you treat this satellite image or digital image as a rubber sheet. So, if I have to uh, fix uh, this rubber sheet over a surface, then I will nail or put a tape on one corner, then another corner opposite direction, then another, another two more corners on opposite direction. Then in between might be that rubber sheet may not be uh, fitting very well. So, again I will use few more tapes or few more nails or few more GCPs ground control point. So, that it uniformly uh, is uh, the my GCPs are distributed and I get best fit. So, that is why uh, you know these ground control point should be spread all over the image uh, rather than concentrating in just one area. So, number of ground control points one should go multiplying by 2. So, generally we go for third order or polynomial equations minimum 10 points choose 20 and the advantage nowadays because of uh, these uh, uh, this technique is becoming very user friendly both in digital image processing in GIS softwares. So, once you choose a two or three initial ground control points the system itself is start predicting uh, about uh, as, as soon as you go for the fourth the values these means the coordinates it will predict and it is sometimes quite good. So, one more important thing the initial ground control points which you choose you should have a very high level of confidence in it. So, whenever you are going for georeferencing make sure that the first few initial points they should be a, a, a very far apart to, from each other one and they should be highly reliable ground control points. You are having full confidence that you are rightly identifying that ground control point on the image as well as on your master map. So, once you are having confidence of that level then this uh, these softwares which will predict for future ground control points the and the geographic values are going to be very accurate and then later on your whole process will become much much easier. The maximum time the software will take or in the in this technique the maximum time should be spent to collect uh, very uh, nicely very accurately the ground control points because then next two steps are uh, has to be done by the computer and nowadays it's not very difficult it's very quickly you can do it then so you must spend a lot of time uh, so that you very correctly very accurately you or precisely you collect these ground control points once the transformation is found through this polynomial equations is applied for each pixel of the input image. So, after the ground control points then you choose the appropriate polynomial equation say I have chosen the third order I have uh, collected 20 points now I am having a, a also at the same time I will have error table also in these softwares you will get error table. So, you would know exactly that which current control point is giving uh, better accuracy or having more error. So, the point which is having maximum error I may reconsider it means I may remove it and re uh, collect it in that way I can further improve my georeferencing. So, this these tables are used to assess my accuracy part of my registration uh, through using these ground control points. Once I am uh, ok with that then I go for this transform uh, transformation function. The other operation to perform when it doing a transformation of this type is determining the pixel value that is the resampling the third step last step in georeferencing. And this is accomplished by using this resampling techniques there are three types nearest neighbor bilinear and cubic convolution we will discuss all these three one by one. So, the transformation can be represented by a polynomial order this this kind of this is a generalized uh, polynomial equation uh, as per uh, given order uh, you can calculate uh, or estimate the x and y 
for your uh, uh, the slave image for that corresponding ground control points. And then once uh, this is available, then uh, like for example, I am giving a so, uh, example from ArcGIS software that is the image to word transformation which is a GIS software is to 6 parameter affine transformation that is the second order polynomial equation in the form of uh, these equations very simple one and I will describe all these one by one these equations that uh, uh, and the, here is the image and uh, here is the master image, here is my uh, slave image and uh, this uh, in equation the x1, uh, x1 the calculated x coordinate of the pixel on the map and this is y1 the calculated y coordinate on this one and then x and y are the column row and row number of my input image and these are of my uh, target uh, map and then I am having A because the second order polynomial also will allow me to transform not only transform from geometric domain to geographic but it will allow me to change a scale. So, in the my equation I am also having A that is scale dimension of a pixel in a map units in x direction then I need to have uh, B and D and that means the rotation terms because it the second order polynomial also allowing you to rotate the image not only allowing us to change the scale not only transforming from geometric domain to geographic but also rotation. And then C and F are the translation terms that means X and Y map coordinates of the center of upper left pixel. And uh, then uh, also one more thing is the negative of Y scale because remember I mentioned that in a slave map or image scanned map or an image the uh, the coordinates starts from top left whereas in a, a georeference map the coordinates will start from bottom left and therefore this negative of e is all plays also very important role of y scale that is dimension of a pixel in a map units in x direction so that has to be also accommodated in my scale this y scale negative as i have just explained to you is because of the origin of an image and a geographic coordinate system are different and the origin of a image is located in the upper left corner whereas the origin of a map coordinate system is located in the lower left corner now uh, we uh, about interpreting these uh, errors which uh, while uh, when once we choose the appropriate uh, polynomial equation we get the error estimate so how how you choose these errors is that uh, when when the general formula is derived they applied to the control points a measure of error that is residual error is returned and uh, this error is nothing but the difference between where the point from end it up as opposed to the actual location that was specified to the point position. And the total error is computed for each uh, GCP's error is calculated for total it is also total is also useful because we we would like to see whether I am within a one pixel depending on the spatial resolution. So, if I am have, having a uh, 50 meter resolution data then I need that my error in mapping scale should be less than that this total RMS root mean square error and uh, if I am getting that error which is less than say 50 meter then I am sure that I am having within a pixel and that is the best because pixel is nothing but a unit and a unit means indivisible, indivisible and I cannot go beyond that. So, if I am achieving georeferencing or this uh, a error within one pixel, I am achieving uh, quite good georeferencing. So, this uh, value error value describes how consistent the transformation is between different control points. Also in uh, some softwares like in ArcGIS, and uh, this difference is also called links and while when you will do in uh, such softwares these links are shown with the color. So, if it is coming green that means your link is good if it is coming in red that means that particular GCP you have wrongly collected and therefore it is showing more errors. And when the error is particularly large you can remove add a control points to adjust the error. So, it is a, a continuous process. Uh, once you have collected uh, say 10 points now you look for individual points 
and the corresponding errors. The point which is giving maximum errors, uh, you may remove it, again recollect it and if it has improved, then look that which point is giving the maximum error and likewise you can keep improving till you reach within pixel. And although RMS is a good assessment of the transformation accuracy, uh, accuracy do not confuse as a low RMS error with an accurate registration because when uh, for example, the transformation may still contain significant errors due to a poorly entered control points. So, remember this thing if you have collected control points only in a corner of an image, then you will get a small RMS errors. And you would think that I have achieved a very good registration using control point, but in fact not. So, uh, you know that is why I have mentioned that your ground control point should be spread all over your input image. More ground control point that is why I mentioned that multiply by at least factor of 2. So, more ground control points of equal quality means highly accurately collected uh, with high level of confidence that yes these two road crossings is the same as I am seeing in satellite image as in my map master map and use for accurately the polynomial can convert the input data into output coordinates. In the previous lecture I have mentioned that nowadays the Google earth has become more or less a standard product and for high resolution satellite images the ground control points we can also collect from Google Earth by zooming it and once I am sure that that is the corresponding point which I am seeing in my raw image yet to be georeferenced, I will collect those coordinates x and y and put against my image. So, in that way I may achieve a much better uh, uh, georeferencing. There are other ways also, I can go in the field. I have identified these ground control points initially on the my satellite image. I will go in the field, collect my ground control points coordinates very accurately, maybe using even differential GPS. So, once I have collected uh, ground control points ex really on the ground, their coordinates, then my level of confidence in my georeferencing is going to be very high. These are required once we go for very high resolution spatial data or very high resolution satellite images. But if you are using relatively coarser resolution uh, satellite data, probably going in the field and collecting ground control points or the coordinates of ground control points may not be required. So, whatever available resources you can use especially the Google Earth and some master maps already georeferenced satellite images and then can collect the GCPs corresponding GCPs and can get uh, the georeferencing done. So, this uh, will uh, convert into output coordinates. Now, the last step in georeferencing that is resampling. As I have said that there are three techniques in resampling, but in simple one uh, view, view graph I can explain to you all three and uh, I think that uh, this is uh, going to be uh, the, the one which is uh, uh, mentioned here is geometrically corrected matrix. This is yet empty matrix means after knowing the transformation function, now I know that this a, a particular pixel has to move. Say for example, pixel 1 which is marked on uncorrected matrix has to be moved in the shaded area of a corrected matrix. Then what should be the value of pixel? One is the location of pixel where it has to move and what is going to be the value, whether original value I am going to keep or I am going to change the value. Why the change is required we will see uh, once we go in the second and third resampling technique. The, in the first uh, resampling technique that is the nearest neighbor in which what we do that uh, whatever the value pixel 1 is having, suppose it, ha it is having a value in a, in a 8 bit image, it is having value of say 150. Now, I will have, I will have a, a, the system will have a look that a, which a out of these 4 which are overlapping the shaded pixel, which one is having the maximum overlap. What I will find that the pixel 3 on this uh, uncorrected image or matrix is having maximum overlap 
on my target pixel and therefore it will have the whole weightage that means the and the pixel value say 3 whatever a, a 3 is carrying maybe 200 will be directly transformed to the shaded pixel of my corrected matrix. So, the pixel which is having the maximum overlap will have the full influence and this way we achieve the resampling which we term as nearest neighbor. We will see little more details about this. Let us go for the second one uh, that is bilinear in which what is done that as you are, as you have seen that uh, this shaded pixel is having overlap by uh, uncorrected image marked 1, uh, pixel 2, 3 and 4 having overlap of different size of areas like 2 is having minimum, 3 is having maximum and 1 and 4 probably of having same. So, now I can use the weighted average concept and say that the pixel whichever is having the maximum overlap will have the maximum weightage while calculating the pixel value of my target cell or target pixel and the pixel which is having a less overlap or minimum overlap will have the minimum weight and therefore it will have less influence on the target pixel. So, in this particular example the th uh, pixel 3 of uncorrect matrix will have maximum influence over this shaded pixel than uh, pixel 2 which is having minimum. So, all 4 pixels as per their overlap will have their weight while calculating the pixel a value of the target pixel and this technique is called bilinear. Now, remember when we started with nearest neighbor only the pixel which had the maximum influence carried the whole value, but here now 4 pixels are involved and therefore you have to think at the same time what is going to happen to the image quality on that I will come little later, but let us discuss the third uh, resampling technique and that is your uh, 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 cubic convolution. So, in which instead of involving 4 pixels now 4 by 4 matrix all surrounding pixels even the far distance pixels of uh, will be used on distance weighted average. So, the pixel which are having maximum overlap and their minimum distance will have the maximum say while deciding the pixel value of the target pixel and the pixel which is very far having large distance no overlap will have a minimum a say while or minimum influence while deciding the pixel value and this kind of uh, uh, resampling technique is called cubic convolution. So, if you compare with nearest neighbor with cubic convolution you would realize that too much averaging of uh, pixel is done for target pixel using 4 by 4 that means 16 pixels are involved to determine a pixel value for a target pixel. But uh, at as, per uh, as per requirements these three techniques may be chosen, but if you are only looking for highest quality of image do not want to compromise on the quality of image then the nearest neighbor you would find the best combination. So, in nearest neighbor resampling which determines as I have mentioned the pixel value from the closest pixel to the input coordinate specified and assign that value to the output coordinate and or output pixel. So, uh, uh, the pixel which is having maximum overlap will have the entire say entire influence. This method is considered the most efficient procedure because it does not have to look the other 4 pixels then weighted average calculation or other thing or like in cubic convolution 16 pixels are involved the distance is measured weighted average is calculated then a new pixel value is found. So, that much of calculation is net not required that is why it is very efficient nearest neighbor in terms of computation time nearest neighbor does not alter the pixel value especially when you are going to use these georeferences images for image classification then nearest neighbor is going to give you the best output while you go for classification because if you go for cubic convolution and then classification you may introduce some errors during classification. So, in that way this technique is also good looking for the future use of that particular image which you have 
just give your reference. So, nearest neighbor will not alter your pixel value. If desirable, if it is uh, uh, subtle changes in the pixel values need to be retained, then you go for nearest neighbor and this method however induces a small error into the corrected image, especially uh, it is might be offset especially by half pixel because uh, there might be some uh, stair steps kind of or staggered uh, staggered appearance in the image because you you are just uh, lifting a pixel value and assigning to another pixel uh, without considering the neighborhood. And the corrected image may be jagged or blocky in appearance if there is much rotation or a scale changes there. So, if it is a simple transformation from geometric to geographic that means first polynomial order then it, there may not be any complication. Now, bilinear the second one as mentioned that determines a weighted average of 4 nearest pixels in the corrected image and these uh, 4 pixels are in bold. And the closer the center points of pixel the greater contribution or weight it will have for the final digital number or pixel value to be assigned to the corrected pixel. And this way the bilinear sampling generates resampling generates a smoother appearance resampled image compared to a nearest neighbor. The pixel value is altered in the process because now four surrounding pixels or overlapping pixels have put their influence while determining the pixel value for the target pixel resulting in a blurring or loss of image resolution. So, as I mentioned if you are going for very accurate looking for very accurate uh, image classification then perhaps nearest neighbor might be good. Even uh, bilinear can work but cubic convolution may not give that kind of good results. But will have a very smooth appearance and this method requires 3 to 4 times the computation time as compared to nearest because in nearest method once the maximum overlap pixel is found that value is assigned no calculation. But here weighted average has to be calculated using 4 uh, pixels and therefore computation time is going to be 4 times. Highly accurate registration will achieve more faithful pixel values. So, if your first step is very accurate then you will achieve better results in the last step. And last one in this uh, resampling technique is cubic convolution and they, this more sophisticated method because it involves the 16 surrounding pixels of uncorrected image to estimate the pixel value for the target pixel. And therefore, of course, it is going to be much more uh, computer intensive that it is closer to the perfect sin x over x resampling than the nearest neighbor or y linear and avoids disjointed appearance very smooth appearance as compared to nearest neighbor which will have a jagged or stair steps kinds of might have. Whereas, uh, this will have this will provide the cubic convolution provide the more uh, smoother results, but not maybe may not be appropriate very appropriate for images for which are which are going to be for classification and it provides a slightly sharper image than bilinear, but it also corrupts the original pixel value. Altered original pixel value is completely altered having influence of now 16 neighboring pixels and this method is not recommended as I am mentioning the classification is, for, is to follow as the new pixel value may be slightly different than the actual radiance values detected by the satellite sensor. And the computation time is going to be more than uh, 10 times uh, then compared to nearest neighbor method. So, this brings to the end of uh, this uh, georeferencing technique uh, which is very important and common technique between remote sensing and GIS. If all three steps are followed very carefully then one can achieve a very, very good high, uh, georeferencing. And any time you can check your results of georeferencing by putting your images or maps which you have georeferenced on Google Earth. So that if it, it, it if it fits with the surroundings, you are you are sure that you have done a good georeferencing. So good luck. Thank you very much.